and welcome back to chapter eight lesson one um i know i was hearing some questions why are we going back and forth miss richardson that's just because that's the way it was suggested to do to me so i'm following the leader until i know better <laughs> okay um miss yoder's done this quite a bit of for many years and she suggested doing it this way and so i'm going to do it this way all right so fractions and division a fraction is a number that names equal parts of a whole or parts of a set. A fraction represents division of the numerator by the denominator. So you're really saying 1 divided by 3, that line means division. And a lot of times I will actually put the little division sign there because it really means 1 divided by 3. Okay? So it says, essential question, how are factors and multiples helpful in solving problems? The numerator is the number of parts represented. The denominator represents the numbers of parts in the whole. So the denominator tells you how many parts are in a whole. The numerator tells you the number of parts you have. Okay? And we are going to go right past. So let's look at number one. Guided practice. Two bags of bird seed are used to fill three bird feeders. How much bird seed does each feeder use? Represent the situation using the model, then solve. Well, two bags of bird seed are used to fill three bird feeders. Each feeder uses how much of a bag of bird seed? Well, let's, let's go back. So we have, well, we have two bags of bird seed, and it's split up by three feeders, right? Well, yeah. Let's but let's let's think about this. So if I split each bag into three pieces, right? Because, um. So if I split, so if, if we have two bags and they're used to fill three bird feeders, right? So this is the piece for one bird feeder. This is the piece for the second bird feeder. This is the piece for the third bird feeder. This is the piece for the first bird feeder. This is the piece for the second bird feeder. This is the piece for the third bird feeder. Each feeder uses how much of a bag of bird seed? Well, this one, number one, uses what? How much is that one and that one? One third of this one and one third of this one. One third and one third are two thirds of a bag. So two divided by three is two thirds. All right, I'm going to flip it. Represent each situation using a model, then we're going to solve. Four families equally share five pies. How much pie will each family receive? So we have four sh families, and they're equally sharing how many pies? Five, right? I did it the wrong way. So we have four families, and they're sharing five pies. That's even better, I'm just saying, right? Because now each family gets more pie. So each family receives five-fourths of a pie, or what? One and one-fourth of a pie. So 5 divided by 4 is 5 fourths. What, what's the matter? Yeah, 
it, you're right. It's easy because we started with harder stuff and then we worked our way back to the easy stuff. But sometimes in relooking at the easy stuff, it helps the harder stuff make more sense. Does that help? We have six bags of soil. Oh, whoops. The answer's between the whole numbers of what and what? Whole numbers. One and? Well, if my answer's one and one-fourth, that's between the number one and? What comes after one? Oh, it's between the numbers of 1 and 2. Does that make sense? Did I skip it on here? If I went back to this and we looked at this, 2 thirds is between what two numbers? Two thirds. If I have two thirds of a pie, do I have a whole pie? Do I have zero pies? So my answer would be between 0 and 1. 2 thirds is between 0 and 1. It's more than 0, but less than 1. Look at the next one. Number 3 says 6 bags of soil are used to fill 5 flower pots. So I have 5 flower pots. 1, 2, three, four, five flower pots, and I have six bags of soil. How much soil does each flower pot use? Well, it's six bags or of five that are going into five flower pots, right? You're right. So six bags are going into five different flower pots. Each flower pot uses how much of the soil? One whole and one fifth. So six divided by five is six fifths. Now six fifths is between which two numbers? One and two. Is so we got six fifths. What? I'm sorry, I didn't understand what you said. Mm, well, maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But I mean, if my answer was uh, if my answer was ten thirds, is that going to be between one and two? No. So it really just depends on what your number is. Number four, 40 yards of fabric are used to make nine school banners. How much, how many yards of fabric does each banner use? Holy crikey. So I have 40 yards of fabric makes nine banners. So what's 40 divided by nine? Five. Nine times five is... So it can't be five. Oh, four. So nine times four is thirty-six. Thirty-six plus what gets me up to forty? Thirty-six plus four. So forty divided by nine is thirty-six. So if we're dividing. So we said 9 times 4 is 36. Because I'm so good at writing numbers today. All right. And then we borrowed, right? So then we have 10 minus 6 is 4. Instead of saying a remainder of 4, we're going to put the part over the whole. So it's 4 and 4 ninths. So 40 divided by 9 is 40 ninths. That answer is between which two numbers? How'd you get four and five?
Okay, so 4 and 4 ninths is between 4 and 5. So it's bigger than 4, it's smaller than 5. Okay? Let's look at the next page. Next page. DeMott uses 4 gallons of gas in 3 days, driving to work. Each day he used the same amount of gasoline. How many gallons of gas did he use every day? So he is using four gallons of gas in three days. How many gallons of gas did he use in one day? One and one third. So 4 divided by 3, 1, 1. So then you do the parts over the whole, 1 and 1 third. I think this is easy, cheesy, lemon, squeezy, Miss Richardson. I'm not so sure about it, Miss Richardson. Not getting it at all. Alright. Alright. Let me see if I can break it down a different way. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Do you understand how we do the division? Yes. Yeah. No, you don't understand. Nod your head. Yeah. Give me a thumbs up if you understand how we do the division. Alright. Alright, let me do this. I'll slow down for the next one. Suzanne made two gallons of punch. She's dividing it equally among ten people. How much of the punch did each person receive? So what I have is I have two gallons of punch. And she's splitting amongst ten people. So I need to think about this. My first thought is this. If I have how many gallons? If I have to, so if I have, let's say we're going to a party. Okay. I'm trying to figure out how much punch to have for my party. Maybe we'll have a Easter party. I don't know. But I'm having a party. And I have two gallons of punch. I need to figure out, and it says, I'll look and it'll tell me the serving sizes. And it says, oh, for two gallons of punch, Miss Richardson, you can give ten people drinks. Well, now I need to figure out... Let's say Bessie Sue says, well, I need to know how much drink to put in everybody's cup, right? Okay, that makes sense, because I want it to be fair schmear, right? I don't want somebody to get a ton of drink and somebody else not to get any. So I'm splitting two gallons amongst ten people, okay? So this... Remember, we said this is like a big divide sign, right? Yep. I have two gallons, and I'm dividing it amongst ten people. Now I need to figure out how much of the punch everybody gets, or how much of the punch ten people receive. Now, Two gallons, ten people. So each person would receive how much punch? Well, I can divide the top and the bottom by two, right? So each person gets a fifth of the punch, right? Or I could say each person gets 
two tenths of the punch. So there's a couple different ways you can look at it. I could say they get two tenths of the punch, or I could say they get one fifth of the punch. So if I'm splitting two gallons, let's say this is a gallon, and this is a gallon, okay? I'm splitting it between five people. I can draw the line in the middle, or ten people. I'm going to draw the line in the middle, then I can make this five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. So I would get a tenth out of here, and I would get a tenth out of here. So I would end up with two tenths. I'd get a tenth out of this gallon and a tenth out of this gallon, right? Because I have two gallons. Or I would get one fifth. Yes, no, kind of so. All right, the baseball team is selling 30 loaves of banana bread. One of my friends has an amazing banana bread recipe, and she shared it with me. It is quite delightful. So the baseball team is selling 30 loaves of banana bread. Each loaf is sliced and equally divided into 12 large storage containers. If each slice is the same size, how many loaves of banana bread are in each container? So they have 30 loaves of bread. And it says each loaf is sliced and it's divided into 12 containers. So I have 30 loaves of bread, and I'm split it into how many containers? 12 containers, right? How many loaves of bread are in each container? So I have 30 loaves of bread, and I'm splitting it into 12 containers. No, nah, I'm not. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. All right, so I have 30, and we know that the line means divide. So I'm going to make 12 containers. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Now, I have 30 loaves of banana bread. Do you agree with that? All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my whole banana breads and I'm going to split them up evenly, okay? One for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Can I do it again? Yes. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Can I do it again? No. So here's what we started out with. I started out with 30. And I'm dividing my... Uh, Dividing it by 12, and we said, how many times will a whole banana bread go into each pan? Two times. Two times 12 is 24. I'm going to borrow. Now I have 10 minus 4 is... 10 minus 4 is... 6. Now I have 6 loaves left. I have six loaves left, and I have to split them into 12 containers. Well, I have six parts out of 12. So each container gets two whole loaves of bread and six twelfths of a banana loaf. 
How do we reduce that? I could. I could. Or I could divide it by 2 times 3, which is, so I could divide the top by 6, I could divide the bottom by 6, and now I have 1 half. So I can fit 2 loaves of banana bread and 1 half in each container. Does that make sense now? Yeah. I have some shaking hands. I saw that. Let's look at number one on the practice. Three pounds of potatoes make eight equal size servings of mashed potatoes. How many pounds of potatoes are in each serving? We're going to represent the situation with the model. Then we have to solve it. So I have three pounds of potatoes. So I went to the store and I bought a three pounds of potatoes. Three pounds of potatoes. And out of my three pounds, LBS means pounds, my friend. I can feed eight people mashed potatoes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I can feed eight people mashed potatoes. So, if I am using three people, or three pounds of potatoes, how many people am I splitting it up by? Eight. So each person gets three eighths of a pound of potatoes. So three divided by eight equals three eighths. The answer is between the whole numbers of what? Well, okay, so 3 eighths is that, what number is that close to? Is it close, is it a whole? No, if it's not a whole, is it between, it's going to be between 0 and 1. If it's not a whole, it's going to be between 0 and 1. Does that make sense? All right, to the back. Nope. <laughs> One large submarine sandwich is divided equally among four people. How much of the sandwich did each person receive? How many sandwiches do we have? One. How many are we splitting it between? So how much did each person receive? One fourth. I have four gallons of paint, and I'm going to paint 25 chairs. If each chair used the same amount of paint, how many gallons of paint are used to paint each chair? So how many gallons of paint do I have? Four. And I'm splitting it amongst how many chairs? So, how many gallons of paint are used to paint each chair? Four, four twenty-fifths. Now, is four twenty-fifths, is that close to twenty-five? No. Now, four out of twenty-five is in between which two numbers? It's going to be between zero and one. Because 4 25ths is less than one whole. Mrs. Larson made 12 pillows from 16 yards of fabric. How much fabric was used to make each pillow? So, which number am I splitting up? Am I splitting up the 12 or am I splitting up the 16? 16. Um, so I have 16 yards of fabric. 
And I'm splitting it by how many pillows? Twelve. Now, 16 over 12, do I have a hole there? Yes. My hole is going to be what? What is my hole worth? 12 over... So 12 over 12 is my one hole. And what do I have left? I have four twelfths, right? One hole and 16 minus 12 is four twelfths. I can divide the top and the bottom by what number? Four. And now I have what? One and one third. I'm feeling better about this lovely math, Ms. Richardson. I'm looking for my thumbs. I'm looking for my thumbs. Okay, it looks like... Dude, you're going to make me sick. I have one front... No, not you. One front uh, making rocking my boat. All right, so we need to fill in the blanks with the correct word to complete the sentence. The numerator is the blank number in the fraction. And the denominator is the bottom. Elena drinks five bottles of water over seven volleyball practices. How much water did Elena drink each practice if she drinks the same amount each time? She has five bottles of water. And she's splitting it by what? She's splitting it by 7, right? 5 out of 7, which would be C. Okay, so homework for today is this worksheet. So solve each problem. Answer as a mixed number if possible. Make sure you reduce. Okay, so these are mixed numbers. This should all be stuff that we've done. It's all stuff that you should be able to be successful with. Make sure you get the common denominators before you add or subtract. And make sure you check your signs. If it says adding, please add it. If it says subtracting, please subtract it. And you got it double-sided. <laughs> and this has a least common multiple. They, oh my gosh, they give you the least common multiples already. So you just need to add and subtract. All right. Any questions? Now, let me tell you really quick, just for everybody's benefit. Tomorrow, we're going to review Chapter 9. And Thursday, we're taking the test. And Friday, I have something fun planned for math class. Tomorrow is the... I'm so sorry. Tomorrow is the review. Thursday is the and Friday I have something fun planned. All right, we'll talk to my friends at home later. Bye.